Okay, for this next question, we're going to be looking at some key terms. We're going to start with these first five, and we'll start with color depth. We have a representation of color depth, and as you can see, we have 2 to the 1, which would give us two colors, 2 to the 2, which would give us four colors, 2 to the 3 would give us eight colors, 2 to the 4, 16, so as you can see, it's doubling every time. Well, what does that mean? For example, the first one, one bit of color equals two colors. Well, if I put some bits down here, one, two, four, eight. So we've got four bits. Okay, four bits. So for example, the first one, two to the one, is either going to be a zero or a one, i.e. two colors. But if I look at two bit, this one up here, I have the possibility of zero, 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 one, one, zero, one, one. So a possible of four different color combinations, as you can see here. Now if we go into the next one, so this is two bit, one bit. Okay, if I look at three bits, I can go zero, 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 one. And then I have got to find another four different combinations. So for example, I can go one, zero, zero, one, zero, one, 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 zero, and then finally one, one, one. So it gives me one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight possibilities. If I move on to four bits, as you can see here, it gives me 16, right down to eight bits, which we're familiar with, which would give us 256. 24 bit gives us a maximum of over 16 million colors. So the bit depth is basically the number of colors we can represent using bits. So to answer the question, the color depth is the number of possible colors of a group of pixels based on the bit depth. Okay, the next one, we have ASCII code and extended ASCII code. Okay, so if I bring in the first table, this is showing ASCII code. Now ASCII code is, although I've cropped it off a little bit, is the first 128 characters on a keyboard. If I go down, we've got a backspace key, which is number eight, shift key, escape key, so on and so forth, as you see here, escape key, would be represented by the number 27. Obviously, as we go further down, we've got things like the plus sign being 43, and then letters, letter R, represented in either normal decimal or in hexadecimal. So all the different keys on the keyboard are represented using ASCII code. Now, we can go a step further, where we have something called extended ASCII. I'll put this over the top. And this, as you can see, has a lot more, more characters, and this goes up to a possible 256, so a lot more symbols. The um, Some familiar ones, 171 is the half, the um, greater than or equal to, positive or negative signs as well. Move those two out of the way. The next question is Unicode. Now, Unicode was developed, as you can see here, Unicode was developed to represent all the different language systems of the world, but what it also includes, um, which is ever-increasing, is um, these things, emojis. Now, Unicode can hold a lot more characters than um, ASCII or extended ASCII. In fact, um, we're now to version 14 of Unicode, and the standard number is 144,697 different characters. So as more and more um, emojis are created, obviously they can take up one of those slots in that um, in that particular um, system. So there we go, three different systems to look at different texts and different um, different things we can type in to um, get things to appear on the screen from our keyboard. Okay, let's bring these two images in. First of all, um, we'll start with the big image here. The sampling rate is basically the number of samples taken per second. So if you can see here, um, we've got a very, on the left hand side, a very low, um, a low sample rate. Uh, but as this increases, um, here's a higher sample rate, the sound quality has improved massively. Why is that? Well, if I show you on this one, 
If we base it on this, look, you can see that it's following. We're trying to get it to follow the curve as closely as possible. So the more samples that are taken, the closer it is to the curve and the better, better the quality in terms of the music. So the higher the sample rate, the better the quality. Okay, that is a sample rate, the number of sound samples taken per second. Okay, what is a bitmap image? Well, a bitmap image is basically an image that's made up of pixels. And we can see here that it's made up of lots and lots of these tiny squares of color. Obviously, the more pixels, the more pixels per inch or pixels per centimeter, then the higher the quality image. This is a bitmap image. Okay, so that's the first five explained. If I move on to part two, a color image is made up of red, green, and blue color combinations. Eight bits are used to represent each of the color combinations. Well, again, I'm going to use a diagram. To... So here we go. If it's eight bit, how many variations of red can we have? Well, we can have two, five, six. How many variations of green in terms of eight bit? Obviously, again, two, five, six, and blue, the same two, five, six. If we multiply all of those together, then we get a color combination of 16,777,216. If I bring this, we can see that 8 bits, 2 to the 8, equals 256 colors. So, hence, we have 256 multiplied by 256 multiplied by 256. Okay, and just to answer the final thing, um, describe the effect of increasing resolution and sampling rate on the size of a file being stored on a computer. If we increase the resolution or we increase the sample rate on the size of a file, well, obviously, in terms of images, it's going to increase the size, and in terms of sound, it's going to increase the size. The higher the quality, the, um, the more space um, it's going to take up, the more space it's going to be needed to store that file. Okay, so that answers all of those three questions. I hope that's helped. Um, thank you very much indeed, and I will see you for the final video in this series. Thank you very much indeed.